Hey guys, this is Tash, the Starcross Stitcher. How are you all going? I'm really good and I hope you're all just as well as I am. Um, this is my first video after Mania. Wow, Mania was amazing and it was crazy and manic <laughs> and that's all the things that Mania is supposed to be so I guess that's good. Um, I actually really enjoyed my Mania. What I decided to do for Mania was to stitch on one of my whips for every day and for any day I didn't have a whip I would have a new start so by the end of the month I would have 31 whips um, that didn't actually happen because I ended up finishing two things and I made a couple of them into UFOs and didn't have a start for that day um, stuff like that so I don't actually have 31 whips um, plus I've finished a couple one or two since Mania um, so my whips aren't completely out of control but I really enjoyed it though um, I didn't enjoy having to put away my pieces after working on them for only one day. And that's what everybody complains about with Mania. But I really did enjoy having the chance to start a lot of projects that I've wanted to start for a long time. A really long time. Um, and, you know, I don't know. I keep putting off the starts because I feel guilty for starting so many things. But this time I didn't feel guilty. I went for it and it was great. And I loved it. So I'm going to show you... First of all, I'm going to talk about some of the more controversial projects that I did in Mania. Um, you might remember that I did a, <laughs> a video for every single day of Mania, almost every day. I missed a few days um, because I was away or busy. Um, but let me, I'm looking at my list now of what, what whips I did, and what new starts I did, and what some of the controversial ones were. So, um... <laughs> Probably the biggest one was um, The Lady with the Fan by Riolis, the kit. Uh, it's this one. If you remember me showing you that. I started this and everyone was worried. Well, I was complaining because the fabric wasn't big enough and I was missing a colour of thread, a colour of bead. And everyone said, oh, you must write to the company and get your money back and so on. Um, but I haven't done that because I'm lazy. That's all. It's just because I'm lazy. I have a piece of fabric here that's working pretty well. Um, substitute fabric. I start. A lot of people had questions for me about this floss. This floss is sort of fluffy. If you can see, please focus. It's sort of fuzzy. It says it's a acrylic wool blend, um, and it is fuzzy. But when you stitch with it, it's actually fine. Uh, this is on a fourteen count. And you won't be able to see here at all. You'll have no idea. And I don't even know which way is up. Um, but yeah, this is 14 count. And the coverage is pretty awesome. I'm really happy with it. When I substituted the fabric, I considered going up to a 16 count. Um, but I'm really glad I didn't. I think it goes that way. I'm really glad I didn't. The coverage seems to be amazing. Um, of course, the camera is probably hiding a lot of flaws. Um, seems to be much more forgiving in terms of neatness of stitches because the, the thread is kind of bouncy, if you will. Yeah, but it's nice. I quite enjoyed working on it. And I will do more. The hard thing about Mania is putting things away after one day. I know I already said that, but it is so true. Um, the other thing that a lot of people had a lot of comments about was my Chatelaine Secret Victorian Garden Mandela. Um, and because I said I didn't like it anymore, I didn't like the houses that were around the outside, I had started that when it was a mystery. Um, so I didn't know what it looked like when I bought it and paid $400 for it and started stitching it. Um, so I was considering selling it, if you recall. Excuse me, I'm just going to... So it turns out that a very nice person did offer to buy it, um, and it's already made its way over to her and she loves it. And I got a pretty good price for it. So she's happy, I'm happy. Now I'm perusing the European Cross Stitch website to try and find what Chatelaine I'm going to be doing next. <laughs> um, I'm making a shortlist. I'll make a video about my shortlist sometime when I've cut it down enough. Um, and I've also and I'm also going to wait until I finish this. This here is um, Japanese octagon box. So when I finish Japanese octagon box, I'll be making a big purchase, which will be fun, so fun. 
Um, what else can I talk about? I don't think any of my other whips were a big, a big problem for anyone. A lot of people saw some of my whips that aren't straight up cross stitching or the one that was on 56 count and things like that. And I got a lot of comments like, you're, you're a fearless stitcher, you're so brave, I could never do that, etc. And so on like that. And I think I just want to say that, well, I really hate comments like that because you're doing yourself a disservice if you believe that. I don't believe that you should be afraid of your stitching because if you love it, try and do it. And if you, I mean, if you don't succeed in doing it, you can just try again. I, when I'm stitching, if I'm doing something I've never done before, I'll have like a little scrap piece of fabric that I can practice new stitches on. Um, there are lots of tools out there to help you if you're afraid of small accounts of fabric. Um, you know, magnifier glass, magnifying glasses and lights. Um, there are also, you'd be surprised, the people um, in our community, either on Flosstube or Facebook or even in your local, like, EGA guilds or something, who will be able to help you with stitches you've never done before and styles you've never done before. Um, I also would really, really recommend that if you can, go to classes held locally, um, or held anywhere, but locally is usually more... more affordable. <laughs> um, there's, I just really think there's no reason to be afraid of stitching. It makes me so sad when I hear people say that. It does. Um, I don't think that I'm brave in anything I do. I just do what I want to do. Um, and I practice if I don't know how to do it. I just practice and if it doesn't turn out perfect, I either do it again or live with it. Because in the end it's my hobby. It's for me to enjoy and for me to do. And yeah, that's it. So... I have a few things to show you. I've got a finish, a few FFOs, I have some haul, I have some progress that I've made this month since Mania finished. I guess I'll start with a finish. It's not cross stitch, but not a cross stitch finish though. This is a diamond painting. If you've never heard of this, it is little shiny resin dots stuck onto sticky parts of a page. This is like a canvasy sort of paper. It's like canvas. Um, yeah, and you put glue in a pen and you just stick it to the page where the page is sticky. And it's quite pretty, but I don't know that I'd bother doing it again. Uh, this is a lot faster than cross stitch. This took me, in total, let me see, seven and a half hours to complete this. If I, and you know, as you can see, there's all this background stuff. All of this, that's not diamonds, but all the blue part, all the bird is diamonds. I don't know if you can actually see any of the sparkle on that. Yeah, you can. Um, so it was fun to do. It, it, there's something really satisfying about you use a little pen, you pick up a bead, and you just place it down on the paper and it sticks. Um, I don't know if I'll do this again. If I did do it again, I would choose one with square dots. This one has circular dots. If you decide to start getting into this, you can pick one up on eBay or AliExpress or Wish. You pick one up for less than five dollars. Um, and then if you decide to get more and more into it, you can spend more money. Some people have gone so far as to buy a piece of canvas that is just a blank grid and then bought enough dots um, to do a heaven and earth design on it. Um, because the dots actually come in the colours of heaven and earth, of, sorry, come in the colours of DMC. So black is 310 and this is like 712, this, this yellow colour and so on. One of these is one of these greens here is 500, and the next one is 501. So they're DMC colors. So I don't know. It's interesting. I wouldn't bother doing it again. I've I've looked actually at buying more. And I just am not interested enough to buy them. Okay, um, FFOs. So last weekend I was going to make a video, um, but I didn't in the end because I got caught up doing some FFOs, and you know what? These aren't. These aren't perfectly FFO'd, so don't judge. Don't judge. This is a Just Nan design called Spring Spring Rabbits or Running Rabbits or Spring Bunnies or something. It's Just Nan. Um, there's a little charm in the middle, as you can see. Someone I used to work with on night shift just brought this in one night and said, "Oh, Tashi, cross stitch. You might want to you might want to stitch this up," and I did. And my plan at the time was to give it to my grandmother because she likes rabbits. Um, but I don't know if I will because I'm not really happy with the way it's finished. Um, I think this white 
is too stark because the um the blue linen is actually quite dark blue and the white looks very stark and this wooden color does no favors to the piece so i'm not sure but anyway that's one finish this next ffo this is my favorite i finished this it says in 2008 and isn't that so cute this is called the snowdrop fairy um it's one of the flower fairies this is art by uh, Cecily Mary Barker and the kit came from DMC um, and I did this as it says in 2008 and I really really love it and I think the frame is beautiful and I just want to sit here on my desk and look at it all day every day <laughs> I think it's beautiful I think it's so pretty um, I will probably see if my niece likes it and let her have it oh I can see my own reflection <laughs> in the glass um i'll probably see if my niece likes it and give it to her if she wants it and if she doesn't then i will keep it for myself i'll stick it up on my cupboard and look at it every day because it's so pretty and i think the frame is really pretty too i got that at the dollar shop for about six dollars or something and then my final ffo is one that i did for tim's birthday tim's birthday was on the 15th that was last thursday and i started this during mania and I stitched and stitched feverishly on it. It took me so long to do. Uh, 19, I'm just looking up how many hours I put into this. 19 plus 9.5, nearly 30 hours this took me. Um, and look away, little children eyes, it's got a naked lady in it. Don't be upset, it's a naked lady. There you go, that's called bondage. Uh, the frame is big. I'm trying to get the reflection off of it. That's as good as it's going to get. It's called Bondage. Um, it's from a designer called Crass Cross. That's better. And it's an adult piece, I realise. Um, Tim really loves it. Why wouldn't he? It's very sexy. Um, yeah, so those are my three FFOs. Yay! Um, I have a start and I have stash and I have a lot of progress. So my new start is this one. <laughs> uh, yeah. I realise you can see right through the hater there, never mind. So this is Slut Muffin and within like a wreath of flowers. This is going to go above my side of the bed and then there'll be one on the other side of the bed that just says Sir and it's in like a, a different kind of wreath, like a blue wreath. So there'll be companion pieces to go above our bed. <laughs> um, this is from the Snarky Art Company and I will put in photos of what they look like when they're finished here. So for the rest of my, can't even reach all of my, all of my whips, because I started so many things in March, sorry, in May, Mania, I sort of felt like a lot of them were small enough that I could finish in a week or, you know, a few days of stitching. So I tried to do that and I just kept running into roadblocks all the time of doing that. I was working on this one, which you saw last month. Behold the field in which I grow my fucks. Um, and as you can see, I've done quite a lot of it, but I've run out of this dark grey colour, dark brown colour. It's called Dark Chocolate by Gentle Arts. Um, yeah, and that's very annoying. Very, very annoying. Um, so I've sort of stopped on this because they don't have that colour at my LNS, so I'm waiting on an order from 123 Stitch. Um, and then I can finish this. And that's really annoying because I really could have finished this in just a couple of days. Um, I wanted to try and finish undulations, um, but I took that to my sister's house when I went babysitting and I left it there. <laughs> um, that only would have taken a few days as well. I'm going to be working on a sort of finish to start one sort of um, system as going ahead so that my whips don't get too out of control. The idea was that I would finish this and um, the bondage piece and that would let me start this but the 17th came along and I'm doing year of whips which meant I had to have a new start on the 17th so this is what it was um, so yeah the other thing I thought I would probably be able to finish in a week or so was the big one okay the fabric is big but the piece I wanted to do isn't that big this this is A is for Anchor, um, and it's the Prairie School Alphabet. Um, I wanted to finish the A block, it's just here, comes down to about here. There's a bird that goes up here. 
Oh yeah, I did start stitching the bird. Um, yeah, I I was going to just straight up stitch this until it was done, but I got super bored, <laughs> so I stopped. Um, this is really monotonous, boring stitching, and there's enough detail to make it annoying, and enough um, monotony to make it boring. Uh, sorry, enough detail. <laughs> enough detail to make it complicated, and enough monotony to make it boring. I'm not enjoying doing this, and I'm only on A. I've got a long way to go. I mean, can you see how big this how big this fabric is? It's going to be nine letters by three. Um, and I mentioned it before, but I got the idea of doing this from Jan. That's her YouTube name is Thread Garden. Um, at the Mirabilia treat she a retreat, she actually brought her completed one, and it was incredible. It was so amazing, and uh, I really loved it, and I really wanted to do it, and now I'm regretting it, because it's huge, and I think I'm never going to finish it. Um, okay, so I've also been working on And A Forest Brew, and that's how much I've done so far. That's six weeks of work. I'm doing this as a stitch along with my mum. It's one over two on 35 count natural linen of some kind. It's quite nice linen. It's more like Wichelt. It's pretty crunchy, um, but it's really nice to stitch on. Um, yeah, so that's six weeks worth of progress because we're doing two motifs a week. Um, and if you look at my mum's Instagram, which is motif by hand, you can see her progress. Uh, let me just fold this up properly. Uh, the next thing I wanted to show you is ah Bella B let me pull that out Bella B by Nora Corbett um this is one of the Bella ladies oh it's very obvious isn't it okay so I've been <laughs> as I've been stitching this I've noticed but I thought maybe you couldn't tell on the camera there's a difference in the colors in her forehead a difference a dye lot difference in the skeins and I'm so annoyed, I guess. I was hoping it wouldn't be obvious and I could ask you guys, do you think it's too obvious and do I have to pull out the top? Um, but I can clearly see that the answer is yes. I'm going to have to frog out the top, which is annoying because it's over one stitching. I'm going to have to frog out that over one section and replace it so that it's the right color. But this is Bella B. I want to get her finished so then I can move on to the other Bellas. <laughs> um, there are three more. When I finished the three, all four of these Bellas, and also when I finished Red Skies at Night, the other Mirabilia I have going, then I can start another new big Mirabilia. And I'll talk about that when I show you my haul. And the last thing I've worked on this month is this. This is another thing I thought I can probably knock that out in a week. And I'm actually on track with this one. This one will probably be able to get done pretty soon. I'm trying to put myself behind it because I'm a little bit dark. Um, this is by The Drawn Thread and it's called Stars. And I will read you the verse when I can find it. Just a minute. Age is opportunity no less than youth itself, though in another dress. The sky is filled with... Sorry, as the evening twilight fades away, the sky is filled with stars invisible by day. And it's from Morituri Salutamus by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Um, and down at the bottom here, whoops, wrong piece, wrong picture. Down at the bottom, there's going to be some houses under the tree. So yeah, that's what I've done. You can see that um, the original chart um, offers a version with just the alphabet at the top. Um, there's an alternate charted version in here that has this verse, and I've done the verse. So yeah, I'm getting getting along pretty well with this. I love the stars, they're so pretty. They're all stitched by the way, they're not sewn on or anything, just just um just stitching. And of course the chart has a diagram for how to do those stitches. So this will probably be finished hopefully at the end of the week, although I think I might try and finish slut muffin first before I do this. I don't know, there's too many things calling me all at once. Um this is a present for my grandmother, as I think I just mentioned. Um, I converted it, um, it calls for, where's the thread list, it calls for dinky dyes silk, needlepoint ink silks, and thread gatherer silks. And on the Drawn Thread website there is actually a conversion, um, conversion charts for converting dinky dyes and thread gatherers 
to Gentle Arts and converted Needlepoint ink to DMC. So that's what I've done. Um, so this is all, this is the converted colours and I think they look pretty good. So if that's what you want to do, have no fear. It turns out okay. That's better. It turns out pretty good. Um, yeah, so that's Stars by The Drawn Thread. I'm really excited when I finish this and the, the other one I'll finish after this will be the mermaid sampler that I'm doing from Sampler and Anti Needlework. It's called Queen of the Seas. When I finish both of those, I'm going to start another drawn thread. I love the drawn thread. It's my favourite, favourite designer. Um, Alright, that's all of my whips. Let's talk about haul. So I don't have too much haul here to show you. There has been more purchasing going on, but... Um, a lot of it's been going to my USA address. I actually have an address in the USA because my dad works for an American company. He travels over there about every couple of months and he brings back um, whatever stuff we need him to bring back. Um, and it works really well because I save, I literally swear that I will be saving $150 on postage this time when he comes back. Um, so yeah, that should be in mid-July. Yeah mid-July. He'll be bringing me back a lot of goodies that I've ordered out since, since my Okay, I ran out of storage space, sorry about that. Um, I can't remember where I was up to. I think I was saying, was talking about Stash and saying that I'm going to be getting a bunch coming from the States delivered by my dad, which is great. Having a US address is pretty much essential for anyone who lives in Australia, in my opinion. Okay, so my first stash that I got was actually a gift uh, from my grandma. She sent me two samplers she had hanging in her house that she knows she'll never stitch anymore. Uh, this is called the Bird Sampler by the Scarlet Letter. Um, and it, I think it used to be a kit because it actually says on the back what the kit includes and so on. Um, yeah, there's a nice close-up picture of the finished piece. I'll never stitch this, I don't really like it very much, um, but it's very nice of her to send it to me. She sent me another one that I do really like. It's called B1824 and it's a spot motif sampler. And the little story at the bottom says that it was probably stitched by a young lady um, who brought together a lot of different traditions of her family because it says it could be um, Portuguese, Italian, Spanish, French, German, British, or possibly even, though unlikely, American. Um, and I love all the different motifs and, you know, the, the lady breastfeeding under the arbor and the lion-y thing over there and I think it's really cool. Um, the parrot. What a weird thing to put in a sampler. The parrot. Um, yeah, so I do like this. Don't know when I'll stitch it, but I do really like it. Um, and she also sent me a nice, lovely notebook. That matches another notebook I already have from her. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's very pretty, right? Very pretty. Um, what else did I get? I got a magazine. This is Jill Oxton's Cross Stitch and Beading, issue 51. Um, I love this on the front. But the reason I got this is for the Voluptuous Mermaids. I'm sure that a lot of people have heard of the Voluptuous Mermaids by now. And if you haven't, you're about to. Check them out. How sexy are they? Oh my god, I love them. I love them, I love them, I love them. They are so sexy and cute. Um, so yeah. <laughs> As it shows you here, you can do them um, completely beaded. Or partially beaded. Um, I'll probably do it as they are up here, which is mainly cross-stitched and then just beaded embell embellishments here. I don't really like the look of the entirely beaded dress. Um, all the entirely beaded everything. Yeah, so those are the voluptuous mermaids. Um, yeah, and I don't know when I'll do those either. Maybe next Stitch Mania. We'll see. Um, apparently this is an Australian magazine, which I've never really seen before, but I've definitely heard of the voluptuous mermaids. I got this on eBay. It was like $10. And I think it was worth it. Um, so, the next thing... Right. On my way back from Vivid, um, I stopped at Victoria House Needlecraft, um, which is, as everybody in Australia knows, the most amazing, wonderful pl place in Australia. Um, <laughs> and I bought some charts. I got the, I've never seen this one before, the Bargello sampler, or Bargello, um, by Rosewood Manor. And I just got it because I really love Bargello. 
and I wanted it. There was another one that they had called New, New and Old or Old into New or Ancient to Modern or something and that was very pretty too. But I didn't have very much money to spend. I got one of the Baroque Beauties flowers. This one is Isabel. I think Jessie Marie is stitching one, uh, but I can't remember which one. And I think these are just gorgeous. Like the detail on them is amazing. But look at the supply list. It calls for so many treasures and beads and chronic. It's going to be not inexpensive to kit, to kit up. Look at that, three, nine, three packs of treasures, three packs of treasures, one pack of treasures, three packs of beads, three spools of chartreuse chronic, three sp two spools of turquoise chronic, and one spool of white peach. Ugh, I'm not even looking forward to stitching that, but it's so pretty. Um, and the last thing I got there was Merchant Mermaid. This is my favourite Mirabilia Mermaid. Um, and I think that this will be the first Mirabilia, full-size Mirabilia I stitch. Um, when I finish all the Bellas and the uh, Red Skies at Night, I'll probably do this. I'm just looking for the, just the right fabric for her. I really like the colour that she's stitched on here. Uh, it says it is Laurel 32 Count by Wichelt, but I just, I, I don't want to do Wichelt. I don't like it. So I've been looking for an alternate and I can't find it as sort of normal looking Zweigart that would work. I thought maybe Cedar Plank from Lakeside Linens might work. Um, and now I've been thinking that since Christmas in July at Picture This Plus will be coming up soon, I could do something even more interesting. It cost me less than $20, guys. $20 was the sale price. And then they also had 25 or 30% off all mirror billies. So yeah, she was very cheap. Yeah, so I've been looking at maybe Haunted from Picture This Plus for her. Because I think she might look good on that. That might be too much in the background. I don't know. I don't know. I will find something perfect and it will be great. And now, the last thing I bought I'm so excited about. This is a full kit with silks, needlepoint ink and Gloriana's with a 14 by 36 inch piece of linen. The Drawn Thread Marriage of Minds entire kit, the whole thing here. Um, if you go into the Drawn Thread web website and try to buy this, it's listed at 140 US dollars. I got it for 58. I'm so happy. I'm really excited. I'm really excited. And I love this is one of my favorite Drawn Thread kits, and the Drawn Thread is my favorite designer. I do realize that this is meant to be for a 20th anniversary. Um, if you haven't seen this before, it says. It's got a Shakespearean sonnet on it, and I don't know what number or anything. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds, or bends with the remover to remove. It is an ever-fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. Then it has um, the, man of, the name of the husband and wife, and the dates of the marriage and anniversary, and it says 20 tempestuous years. I think it's beautiful. It's so pretty. So I have it now, so I can stitch it in 30 years when I have a 20th wedding anniversary. <laughs> if I have a 20th wedding anniversary. I could also stitch it for my parents or something. They're coming up for their 40th in about four years. <sighs> Excuse me. I don't know. All my grandparents must be coming up for their 60th at some point. So I just want to stitch it. I love it. Of course, I already have the chart, so now I have two copies of the chart. I've done that so many times recently. I have more drawn thread kits coming to me in my big haul from the States. I've been spending so much money on eBay. Um, but it's been money that is totally worth spending. And I'm really excited to get all that stuff. Um, okay, 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 okay. I think that's all. I think that's all I have to show you. Um, oh, I was going to talk about Oort jars, but I might do it later. <laughs> um, so... I've decided that I'm going to try doing the vlog style of video. I did it during Mania. I enjoyed it. I really liked uploading something every day. So I might try and do that. Although I think that was probably overwhelming for some people. Because I actually lost a few subscribers. I was up to about 982. Now I'm down to 960 or something. So for whatever reason, people didn't like that. But I'm going to upload maybe not every day. But 
I'm gonna upload more than once a week I think um, take video when I'm thinking of something or while I'm shopping online or something or as soon as I see something I like because I because I keep seeing things that I want to show you and then I forget to talk about it when the time comes to record sorry I've been really out of it in my head lately the last few days I've been basically asleep all weekend not not feeling very well um, but yeah so I'm going to leave it here I will be back with a new video pretty soon in a few days I think because I'm going to try this vlog thing and I think it'll be good at least I'll enjoy it and I know that some people do enjoy it so that's good alright guys that's all for today happy stitching bye bye